I'm Jono Buchanan. Now, it's really tempting to see Logic's loop library as this kind of space which has been curated for us. In other words, we get loads of content which we can download or not. We can just leave it alone. It's full of beat loops and synth lines and little blasts of sound in loads of different categories. And some people love it and some people hate it. But what most people don't do is to see it as a potential kind of database of their own sounds, patterns, and musical opportunities. Now, elsewhere on this channel, I've looked at the idea of the fact that quite often what we want to do is to bring sounds from a project that we've made before into our current project, whether that's a beat loop or a particular collection of plugins that we've put on a particular sound. That great noise that we used in that other track would be perfect in this one too. How are we going to get that information from one project to another? And the loop library presents an opportunity for exactly that kind of stuff that what we've got a chance to do is to build a kind of database of the sounds that we love so that they're available to us in all of our projects, not just our current ones. Now, in preparation for the idea that we're going to add some content of our own to the loop library, I've made two loops, both of which are pattern regions, one of which is a synth one for this airy pick sound in uh, Retro Synth, which we've heard before on this channel, and the other one of which is a drum loop. And together they sound like this. Now, until not that long ago, the content that we could put into the loop browser was either audio files of a sort of fixed length so that effectively they were ready to drag and drop into other projects, and um, MIDI regions, the difference between blue uh, sort of files which were audio based and green files which were MIDI based, which effectively we could add to the loop browser and then drag and drop into our other projects. But now we can also, and this has been true for a little while, we can add pattern regions into the loop browser as well. And this becomes pretty useful. So what I'm going to do is to select my airy PEX pattern and I'm going to control click it. And down at the bottom, I've got the opportunity to export this. Now I can export it to a number of places. I can just save it as a, a MIDI file in its own right. I can save it as an audio file. But what I can also do is to add it directly to the loop browser, to the loop library, I should say. And what that's going to do is to save this not as a rendered audio file, but as a pattern sequence in its own right. So I'm going to click on this option here and up pops this quite interesting dialog box. So what I have a chance to do here firstly is to name my pattern. Now, in order for me to easily find it, I'm going to call it JB Music and then I'm going to call it Pix Pattern. And by calling it that, and by using this tag, effectively anything that I choose to make, I can put into the loop browser using that um, is that a prefix? I guess it is. Effectively, just the beginning of my file name so that immediately if I go searching for that, I'm going to be able to find my content pretty straightforwardly. OK, now then, here are all of the options in terms of me being able to kind of database this particular pattern. Firstly, do I want to make it a loop or a one shot sample? Now, let's suppose for a moment that I wanted to add a sound to the uh, loop library, but it was an individual snare drum that I'd recorded. And I wanted that to sound exactly the same because I was just going to drag and drop that file wherever I wanted to use that snare drum onto an audio track. One shot would be my friend. I don't want it to time stretch or to conform to tempo at all. It's a one off effect. And that's really useful if you're recording sound effects as well. You just want them to always play back the same way. But for anything loop based like this pattern, the loop is going to be our friend. And again, what it's going to do is conform to song tempo. So in other words, if the project to which I want to add this pattern is at 125 beats per minute, no problem. The pattern will just come in at that speed instead. OK, do I know whether or not it's a major or a minor um, sort of scale? Yes, it's definitely a minor scale. But I can also select good for both here. In other words, if I choose to search by only minor scales, fine, this pattern will appear. If I choose to search for only major scales, then it won't. So I can, if I want to, say, you know what, actually, I can see this pattern working quite well in both. So I'm going to select that option. I've also got an opportunity to choose the genre of this particular 
pattern if I want to. So if I want it to be searchable from within the tags that exist in the loop browser already, I've got a chance to say, yeah, you know what, I think this is an electro house pattern, but I don't think I do think that. I think I'm going to just make sure that this is just searchable via the way that I've named it rather than putting it in a particular genre category. So again, I'm going to leave that as none. But if you've made a loop that you know you're going to use for techno projects, then fine, select that genre if you want. And actually, it turns out that this is in D, this particular thing. The notes that I selected are from a scale of D. So I'm going to make sure that I've selected that too. And Logic is going to remember that this project was created at 102 beats per minute. Now, I can also put in descriptors if I want to. Now, at the moment, because I haven't added any effects to this particular loop, it is kind of clean, I suppose. And again, remember, by ticking this box, what that means is that if I search for clean sounds, this sound is going to be included within that list. So I can click anything I like. Did it feel cheerful to you? Nor me. But effectively, what I can do is to choose any options that I want. And when I'm happy with my choices and I've named it correctly, and be, do be careful with your spelling because it's going to appear in the loop browser forever, what I'm going to do is to press Create. And there it is. For a moment, it just created that little loop, just effectively tagging that information, and we're in good shape. And actually, I'm going to do the same thing with my beat loop as well. I'm going to drop back down to export. I'm going to add to the loop library. And this time, what I'm going to do is to call this JB Music. And I'm going to call this Basic Beat Pattern. Solid, useful in a number of different contexts, but nothing too spectacular. So again, that's the name that I'm going to choose. This doesn't really have a scale. So I'm going to say neither because it's beat based. Again, from a genre perspective, I'm going to leave this wide open. It's not in any particular key. And actually, there are a couple of effects on this. So I'm not going to click any of the tags either just to keep things simple. And I'm going to press Create. And again, what's going to happen is that these two files are going to be rendered for me within this window. OK, so what I'm going to do is to mute both of those things. And what we're going to do is to head over here to the loop browser, which we're going to open up. Now, the loop browser, just by default, obviously allows me to search for content in a whole bunch of ways. I can search by instruments. I can search by genres. And here we're going to see the categories that I avoided earlier on, or we can come in via descriptors. And again, what we've got a chance here is to see some of the things that I uh, sort of had an opportunity to add my sounds to. I think we did add clean to the um, original uh, Airy Picks pattern sequence. So what I'm going to do is to come out of all of that for a moment, deselect those options. And instead, what I'm going to do is to search by JB Music. And I'm going to discover my two patterns, which have been added here. And again, if I'm intending to build a big database, actually tagging this content in the ways that I have are going to be particularly useful. So what happens when I take my basic beat pattern and I bring it onto a brand new track within Logic and I just drag it and drop it? What is Logic actually going to do? Well, it's going to remember that it was created for the analog circuits beat pattern. This is one of the drum machine designer kits. But of course, I'm in a position to change that for anything else I like. So if the only thing that I like about this pattern is where the kicks and the snares and the hats fall, the first thing I can do is to dive up here into the inspector. I can come into the electronic drum kits and I can swap this for any other kit I like. And effectively, all I've done is to retain the pattern. Well, that's useful. The other thing that I can do if I bring in my other loop so this is my main picks pattern, is again, Logic is going to remember that this was created for RetroSynth. And if I open this up, it's also going to have completely recalled the settings of the synth that I used it on. But again, I'm in a position just to swap that out. So if I decided that I wanted a different kind of pluck sound, but I like the pattern, then fine, it's available to me to do anything I like with. And of course, I could run that with the original if I wanted to, because they happen to exist within the same project. But 
But this is where the fun starts because what's actually happened here is that whilst our original is with the notes that we originally selected, let me just double click on this and we'll see what they are. Effectively, what we've got is the notes of this as I set them up in the original pattern using a D a harmonic minor pattern. What we're going to discover when we open up the sequence within this particular window is because my song project is in C, this pattern is going to have been imported with those notes instead. So effectively what's happened is that in exactly the same way that if this was an audio file which I had dragged and dropped into my project, because it's in C, the pattern region has conformed to a scale of C instead. Now you might still be thinking, well, hang on, why? I told the pattern that it was in D. Well, remember that the global tracks option for this particular project can be different from the notes that I choose to make a pattern from within the pattern sequencer. In other words, the global key of this particular project is in C. So when I drag and drop this pattern, by default, it's going to be in C. How would I fix that? Well, all I've got to do is to come back into here, open up these notes, and and within this scale, what I can do is to transpose them up into D and now they're going to run alongside the other ones much more nicely. So that's working nicely. The great news is if the next time I think that this pattern would be a nice thing to bring into the next project that I'm working on, which might be in G, I can just drag it and drop it and then I can just conform it to the key of the project that I'm working on. So effectively, we have a chance to use the loop browser in a totally different way to the way that we normally think about using it, which is Apple have created all of this content. We either love it or we don't love it and we want to just make our own sounds. But if you, what you want to do is to create a database of audio files, MIDI regions and pattern sequences, which effectively are available to you within all of your projects, it's an amazing resource. Remember, tag things correctly, definitely get your spellings right so that you're not irritated by the fact that you've put four ends in the word pattern. Why would you do that? Nevertheless, tag things correctly, add the data that you want so that it's highly searchable and effectively over time, every time you make something that feels like a useful little module that you might want to plug into another piece of music that you might make one day, effectively it's all there waiting for you.